Today I'm sewing and sharing another vintage pattern. This is Bacall's 8402. It's a reissued 1960s pattern, a simple style pullover dress with no zippers or fasteners. Just a front, back, and facings. The pattern also gives you choices of three neckline options. You can find this pattern at your local fabric store and online. I've left a link for you below so you can check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew along with me. So grab that pattern, cut out your fabric, mark your dots and notches, and let's get started. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of your front facing piece, as well as your back facing piece. Transfer the darts from your front pattern piece onto your fabric, and then fold your dart in half, and pin through one dart leg and out the other. Do this for both front darts and then take it to your sewing machine and sew from one end of the dart to the tip, leaving thread tails at the end so that you can tie them in knots. Now place your front and back dress pieces right sides together, and we're going to pin the side seam from the underarm to the small dot marked on our pattern piece that is 5 eighths of an inch below this hem extension. Now I'm going to sew from the underarm to the small dot with a 5 eighth inch seam allowance. Do this for both side seams. Once those seams are sewn, press them completely open and press open those seam allowances at the hem extension as well, following the lines from your pattern piece. To finish the seams on the inside of the garment, you could choose to zigzag stitch your raw edges or use your serger. I'm just going to use the easiest method and just use pinking shears along all of my raw edges. I've gone ahead and folded back the shoulder seams of my front and back facing to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to place the front and back facing pieces right sides together and pin the side seams. And then I'm going to sew these side seams with a 5 eighth inch seam allowance and press the seams open. For the bottom raw edge of the facing, I've taken it to my ironing board and folded up the raw edge all the way around by a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew close to that raw edge all the way around. Place your facing right sides together with your neckline. Matching your center front, center back, and your notches, pin the neckline on the front and the back of the dress. Once the necklines are pinned together for the front and the back, also pin together your armhole edges. Matching the underarm seam of the facing to the underarm seam of the dress. And pin your facing to the underarm seam for both underarms. Now we're ready to sew the facing to the neckline and the underarm seams. We're going to start and stop the stitching 5 eighths of an inch below that shoulder seam where we pressed those memory creases earlier. Do that starting and stopping of your stitching for the neckline as well as the underarm seam. Now for all of the seams that we just sewed, I'm going to use my pinking shear so that I can trim my seam and clip my curves at the same time. And then use scissors to clip into the curves of the armhole close to the stitching line, and also clip into the curves of your neckline. And if you're doing this square necked option, you're going to want to trim into that squared off section on both sides so that the facing turns nicely to the inside at those corners. Use sharp scissors to trim into the corner to the stitching line, but not beyond. Now we can turn the facings to the inside of the garment, and then give your neckline and armholes a really good press. To make sure that the facing stays in place at the underarm seams, I'm going to line up the underarm seam of the facing and the dress on the inside and pin in place, doing this on both sides of the dress. Then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, and from the outside of the dress, I'm going to stitch in the ditch of that original seam line 
placing my needle right in that seam line so that the needle also comes out right in the seam line of the facing on the inside of the garment. I'll sew from the top fold of that facing to the bottom of the facing, back stitching at both ends. Now we can finish our shoulder seams. Here is the neckline of my dress with my front and back pieces right sides together. I'm going to take the shoulder seams of the dress portion only, moving the facing shoulder seams out of the way, and pin those front and back dress pieces together at the shoulder seams. Do this on both sides, and then sew those front and back pieces at the shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Being careful as you sew, again, to move that facing out of the way. I've already gone ahead and finished this shoulder seam. And to do that, you're going to use your fingers to open up that outer seam that you just sewed, tucking it to the inside of the garment, and then take your free facing seams and tuck them into the inside of the garment along the memory crease that we pressed earlier. So now I have everything tucked to the inside of the garment, and I'm going to hand sew this section, slip stitching the edges of the facing on the inside. And now all of our facing finishes are complete. The hem allowance for the bottom of the dress is marked on your pattern piece. But you can try on your dress and decide how narrow or how wide you want your hem to be. I cut my fabric from selvage to selvage, so this selvage edge of the dress is not going to fray, so I'm not going to be hemming this dress. But if you're hemming your dress, go to your ironing board and press the bottom raw edge to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch, and then press it once more to your desired width, and then edge stitch close to that inner fold from side seam to side seam for your front and back dress pieces. And then for the side slits and the hem extension pieces, I'm going to pin my hem extension pieces in place all the way around this side slit. Then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and edge stitch close to these pinked edges of those hem allowances from the bottom of the dress to the top of that hem extension and then pivoting my stitching straight across to the other side and then back down that pinked edge of that hem extension all the way back to the bottom of the dress. Do this for both side slits of your dress. Give everything a nice final press and your 1960s dress is complete. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.